everybody, welcome to Madam Speaker 101 with me, Moe Mahapi, also known as the host with the most. <laughs> it's funny because people actually refer to me as the host with the most. Thank you so much for engaging on my channel. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Um, I know it's been a while since I've shared some Madam Speaker, um, but I'm so sorry, but I am on other platforms, so please follow me on Facebook. I am Moi Mohapi Motivation. On Instagram and LinkedIn, I am just Moi Mohapi. The reason why I'm giving you my different platforms is because I share different content, you know, for different audiences. And that's basically why we are here today. We're going to talk about why consistency equates brand identity. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and let's get this party started. So today we're going to be talking about the, the value of consistency and, you know, um, why, why I say it equates into brand identity. I have featured again the little black book, the little black book of secrets, not really secrets, but this is how I've been journaling. So the reason why I'm saying that consistency equates into brand identity, what is the first thing that happens when you've now decided that you either want to start a business or you want to be a personal brand or you want to be an influencer? The first thing you're going to go do is you're going to go and create something on a social platform right so you're gonna go create a page or a fan page or a personal page um you know or a creator page on instagram facebook linkedin twitter whichever one okay and i always say when you go onto social media you kind of need to know why you're going onto social media you have to know why am i on twitter facebook instagram linkedin and youtube like why am i on so many platforms um and it's very important because what I will advise is if you're starting out, try not to be everywhere. I know that the typical term is, you know, be everywhere and so that everyone can find you. No, um, first take everything in steps because I actually find it very difficult to manage so many social platforms. I've got a Facebook account, a Twitter account, an Instagram and LinkedIn and a YouTube account and trying to remain active on all five is time consuming and it's quite difficult. Um, so first and first, what you need to do when we are talking about social media presence, okay? So this is the first tip. Social media presence is what you need to first understand is you need to kind of find your 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 audience. You need to understand who your audience is, okay? Um, and that's a beautiful feature that you find on Instagram. Um, once you've created a, an, a, a creator account, Instagram kind of gives you like insights about who visits who visits your page who watches your stories um you know where they're from what age group so that you can kind of understand who your audience is and if it's really necessary for you to branch out you know out of um, instagram for instance and go to TikTok and, and and there's just so many platforms and people are everywhere but you don't always have to go where everyone is you have to go where your audience is for the type of content that you are creating same thing goes for a business you know we all want to say okay if you're a business you have to be on linkedin but it doesn't matter it doesn't help that you are on linkedin and you're not sharing the right content for your linkedin type of audience so every platform has like its own different audiences and everyone has their own reason why they watch your stuff okay um sometimes i find that my my, my, my stats are skewed because if i compare my facebook and my instagram and my youtube they're quite skewed which makes a lot of sense because it's three different audiences on three different platforms and all platforms kind of push out your content in different ways you know you have to understand what content you're putting out um, in order for you to leverage off your social media uh, platforms so my advice is stick to two in the beginning okay um, and then once you start getting a bit traction and start understanding your core brand and understanding your audience then you can start branching out into the different um, platforms and you know what if you feel that you can't handle it on your own there are so many social media companies out there and we kind of need to also you know support these businesses out there that can help you to you know stay active and relevant um, on all platforms remember I spoke about you don't have to post for the sake of posting so you know you align your brand pillars to your audience to to then the social media platforms um, that you share your content on so it is good to be active but within bounds so if you don't know how to do that you can literally just go and google facebook rules um, or facebook tips on how to get better engagement how to get better views and then facebook will tell you this is the kind of content that you need 
to be producing in order to get this kind of engagement okay um and that helps you facebook will kind of give you rules to say okay you can't post this you can't post that which is good it's just it's guidelines okay so use the guidelines it's very it's very good but i always say like work on one platform master that platform so that once you've got other platforms you'll see how you link everything together and you know what do you export to where and and how okay cool i hope that made a lot of sense all right cool now my second tip is about um i always get asked this one thing it's and it, it's a basically about what's your biography okay so your biography is something that you're going to be using to introduce yourself to the world on your social media platforms um, and when you're doing appearances, when you are trying to book gigs, when you're trying to get that influencer contract, when you're trying to get that endorsement, you kind of have to have like a little snippet of, I am Moe and I sell peanut butter because peanuts make me happy. Okay. <laughs> right. Now the importance about that is biography is very important. Okay. But I'll tell you one thing about my biography. My biography has changed so many times. It actually changes every time someone asks me, please give us like a little short paragraph about yourself. Um, and for me, I feel that the reason why it's not copy and paste of the last piece all the time is because I feel that my brand evolves, you know, because as I learn, I evolve, you know, and I change and I change. But here is the most important key. So your write-up and the and the and the and the, and, 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 and and your paragraph can be different, but the most important thing about having a biography is just highlight the key elements about your brand. So my key elements: I'm a speaker, I'm a motivator, I'm a YouTuber, I am a PR and promotions manager, and I'm passionate about teaching people about being better than themselves. Okay, and that's basically how it works. You highlight just the main things about you and you know how you write it and where you place what then then, then it comes it becomes easier but let that be consistent okay always be consistent about your core competencies okay make sure they're like five you know m more than five you start you start having like this long rap sheet like you're a criminal so keep it to five because i don't think everyone is a master of all and if it's five and it's all related into like one segment for instance all of mine is like public speaker that does one, two, three, four, five, for instance. Okay. Um, then that's easier to have like five or yeah, but just keep it at five. <laughs> just keep it at five, please. All right. So you write a short biography about who you are. Um, and if you don't know how to even start the biography, do a spider diagram. Okay. This is something that I've learned recently from at Sia Brand. Um, on Instagram, follow him. He's actually quite phenomenal, very insightful when it comes to marketing um, and branding. Uh, he was interviewed recently by Vusi um, Timbakwai. Okay, cool. So he said, you know, when you want to position your brand, you kind of do like a spider diagram. And I think that should be the same for your own personal brand. Because at the end of the day, a brand is a brand is a brand, right? So you do a spider diagram, you put your name in the middle. Okay. And then you write all the things that you want. Like, I want to be, I want to inspire. I want to motivate. I want to educate, you know, what platforms do I want to use? I want to use YouTube. Um, you know, I want to be a speaker, um, you know, all of those things. And then they start branching out and then you start seeing, okay, so these, these three are, these three elements are from the same. These three elements are from the same. And then you actually find out that you get like literally five niches just from a spider diagram that just tells you about yourself and what you like and, and what you're planning for your brand. And then, those are your five core uh, competencies that you're going to use in your biography. Okay. Biography, not too long as well. Don't come and write a whole book. Okay. Unless you are writing a book, be straight to the point, mention what needs to be mentioned. And then most importantly, when people ask you for a, for a biography, you need to understand where they're going to publish that. Maybe one of the talks and you are, uh, maybe I'm a guest speaker at a talk. And someone asked me for my biography, but I actually understand the scope of the function um, and I understand my key role. So if I'm going to be invited to do an, a welcoming, you know, an icebreaker welcoming at a, bus at a business breakfast for women, I'm not going to go and talk about unrelated things. So my biography is going to be linked to something that is linked to the audience. Very important. So it's the same as when you do your script, same as when you do your program directing. You always link it back to your audience because you are performing for your audience, no one else. And you need to make sure that they are engaging with the whole event, 
from beginning to the end. Okay. Fantastic. And when you are a guest speaker or you're doing the welcoming and the thanksgiving, those are the two most important like parts. And then obviously the 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 the, the, the main speaker. But the two most important parts is the one that opens the show and then you know the curtain raiser and the curtain closer. So make sure that if you get any of those slots, you have to do you have to come up with a bang. Okay? And it has to be relevant to who you're talking to. Cool. Does that make sense? Alright, cool. And then last but not least. When you're on social media and you want to be consistent, you need to learn to plan your content. I know, it sounds crazy because we are so used to, I'm feeling down because of Facebook. Oh, I'm feeling so sad. Oh, I'm feeling sad. And then like an hour later, you're not sad anymore or you forgot that you said you're sad. And then you're like, I don't know, posting a boomerang of you jumping up and down. And then someone's like, oh, I see you're feeling better now. And then you're like, oh yes. And then you actually forgot. So. When you are a personal brand, influencer, you know, da da da. Remember, your brand pillars need to be considered. Why am I posting? Is this gonna is this helpful? Is this linked to some sort of objective? You know, because everything is like a business, it's a business um, a, a, a transaction or it's, it's a business feature. Then you ask yourself, um, you know, do I have to say this? No. So the easiest way, and this is something that I've learned actually now during lockdown, because I also used to just be spur of the moment, you know, feel like a bird. But then I realized, no, because then I look all over the place, because then one mood is like this, the other mood is like that, and there's no consistency, and um, it's just coming a bit too far. So you have to like do a normal calendar, place your content out nicely, um, weekly it's okay if you don't post every day remember we're not posting for the sake of posting we are posting for a purpose so you you lay everything out according to your your days of the month and you, you know and you make sure that there's a bit of consistency with your imagery that maybe you're using the same pictures and the same videos or you, you know what I'm saying you have to especially on Instagram because what happens is when people are looking to in to to you know find influencers or find personal brands that they can use so for campaigns they go to your instagram page and if it's like full of things it's very difficult because they don't get who you are you, you look very confused <laughs> you look very busy okay and that's basically it so consistency is key you know fruits of your labor being consistent making sure that you understand why you're doing things um everything is there for a purpose you don't just post for the sake of posting okay if you want to learn there's a Google garage. I'm going to share it on my Facebook page. Um, share, uh, go onto that link. It will teach you all the social media jargon insights. And it will even, um, there's like training courses where you can learn certain skills. Um, but it's very important for you to empower yourself. Reading really helped me understand social media a little bit better. Because now I understand it's not just about posting. You know, there's a lot more involved. And the analytics, um, you need to kind of understand what analytics means what and what derives what. I hope I made sense. <laughs> this came to me at 2 30 in the morning and i literally wrote down the points i write everything down so yeah remember to subscribe to my channel my name is moe mohapi the host with the most like subscribe and share <laughs> i'll see you guys at my next video which will be coming up soon because i actually do have a lot to talk about away oh, now i'm going to ciao Mm. Beauty! Beauty is by a lacquer, you know? Peace. <laughs>